Hello and uh, welcome to the Kubernetes training channel. As part of the introduction series, today we'll talk about um, Kubernetes Manager. Now, Kubernetes Manager is a huge uh, topic to talk uh, about. There's going to be more than one um, uh, training and presentation about uh, Kubernetes Manager. This is the, the first uh, one and uh, uh, it's mainly about uh, telling you what um, Kubernetes Manager is and how to perform some, some basic uh, operations available via Kubernetes uh, uh, Manager. So, uh, first thing we need to, to, to say here is that uh, Kubernetes Manager is the standard Kubernetes administration uh, tool. If you already use the Kubernetes, uh, it's very likely that uh, you are already familiar with, uh, with Kubernetes Manager. After um, it comes with every Kubernetes distribution and after a successful Kubernetes um, installation, um, I'm talking here about a Windows installation, you will get access to Kubernetes Manager. The, the easy way uh, to, to launch uh, Kubernetes Manager is using the um, Kubernetes icon, which is uh, here in the, in the system tray. When you right click, beside having access to, to the Kubernetes server, uh, when you click uh, Tool, when you expand uh, this uh, menu, you will uh, get access immediately to the uh, to the Kubernetes uh, uh, Manager. Let's uh, let's uh, launch it. Um, Kubernetes Manager is a Java application. It uh, runs on both uh, Windows and uh, and Linux. This is the startup window. From here, the first thing we need to do is to connect to uh, to the host, to connect to a host. Now, when we connect, we get this uh, uh, this window where we are being asked for some credentials. Now, what kind of credentials are um, are this one? Are are somehow related to database, or it's something similar to the MySQL schema information, uh, or what? Uh, in order to, to explain uh, uh, what uh, what is this about, uh, let's uh, let's take a step back and talk a little bit about the Kubernetes Manager architecture. Now, usually when we say Kubernetes Manager, what we actually mean is Kubernetes Manager client. The application here, this Java application, is the Kubernetes Manager client, and we also have a server. In this image, you can um, you can see uh, these components. Here we have the client, and here we have the server. Uh, how exactly it works? So the the client application, the Kubernetes Manager uh, client application, the Java application we just uh, we just started, it connects to both a server, the Kubernetes Manager server, and also to the standard uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, brokers. It connects to the manager server when the client needs to have access to some very specific administration information. Like for example, when we are dealing with um, uh, users administration, when we are dealing with uh, statistics uh, uh, data, this is when the client connects to the server. When we need to run some standard queries, then the application will connect via the, the, the GDBC driver um, uh, to a broker and from here it's, uh, it uh, goes through the normal um, execution um, workflow. For, uh, uh, for those of you who, who want to know more about the, the, the Kubernetes architecture, the, the Kubernetes manager architecture, about the processes, the multi-layering, uh, the Kubernetes broker, this uh, specific Kubernetes middleware, uh, there's going to be a, a training session dedicated to, to, to these uh, topics. Uh, now let's get back to, to, to the Kubernetes manager. So when we are being asked here for a an username and a password, it's actually the, the data uh, the client needs to connect to the server. This is uh, the, the credentials which are being used to connect from this uh, client, Kubernetes manager client, to the server. By default, the password is admin, and first time uh, you will be um, launching uh, uh, using uh, uh, Kubernetes Manager, you will be asked to change the password. I have already 
uh, changing my password so uh, let's now connect um, connect to the host in the meantime uh, until we connect let's uh, get back to the Qbrid uh, official website uh, and let me show you where you can find uh, information about uh, Qbrid manager so if you go to, to documentation here you can find um, uh, a list of uh, very interesting topics to, to learn uh, to get familiar with Kubrit and one of them is uh, this one how to install Kubrit and how to run uh, Kubrit uh, manager if you click here you will find uh, 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 interesting information actually you can go to more deep uh, topics from what is the, the architecture uh, how to perform some specific operation and, and so on and uh, here we are, we have connected to the host, here we have the list of the databases, the list of the brokers which are running, we can have access to status information and to logs, logs from brokers, from manager, from server, remember the manager is being started because it's being used by the Kubernetes manager client. We are not going into details with all uh, uh, these things uh, will focus uh, uh, now only on the databases. So let's see how we can connect to a database. How do we start at the database? Uh, first thing you need to do when you want to perform operations in a database is to log in to the database. Uh, here I have the default demo DB database uh, user it's uh, DBA and uh, um, there is no sp password uh, specified by default for the demo db database and now we are logged into the demo db database and here we have access to users tables views and other objects but as you can notice nothing is displayed why because actually the demo db database is still not started in kubrid after you log into the database you need to explicitly start the database in order to uh, uh, in order to use it so the right sequence is this connect to kubrid manager server connect to the databases you need and start up the databases and now if we expand all these nodes we get to see the list of the objects we see the users the tables the views the triggers and so on now one interesting thing if you right click on the database on the local host sorry and you click on uh, properties here you have access to some very uh, interesting things besides seeing some of the uh, configuration specifics for your installation uh, for example, if you click the start service, here you get access to, to a, a configuration where you can specify what databases should be auto-started. So you don't need to start them explicitly. Also, you can mention what kind of services are being, uh, uh, are being started uh, uh, automatically. There are many other interesting things. Let me show you just some thing related to query here as you can see the auto commit is set to on which means that by default uh, kubernetes manager does auto uh, commit um, after the sql uh, statements are being executed and also you see here that i have enabled by default the query uh, plan there are many more uh, interesting uh, parameters uh, varying from localhost to databases to, um, to each specific uh, database uh, I, I strongly advise you to, to launch Kubernetes manage uh, Manager and go through to this configuration uh, information. Uh, one last thing for now, remember what, where you have access to various functionalities via right click, you also get the same access via the main menu and via the, uh, the toolbar. Now this concludes the first uh, part of our um, uh, presentation. In the second part of the presentation, we will uh, um, we will execute some uh, queries and see some uh, uh, some of the features which are available in Kubernetes uh, uh, Manager. So, uh, please uh, uh, attend to the second presentation as well to find more about uh, Kubernetes Manager.